Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one web platform that makes it easy to create your own outstanding website for your business or personal needs. But more on that later. This week, new and upcoming game releases give us new reasons to play on deck. Plus, a new beta update fixes a long-standing issue with gyro controls. And updates to Steam VR hint at just what's around the corner for Steam. All of this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. Okay, so like, as a 90s kid, I've got to say that I'm pretty excited about the HD remakes of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 coming to PC. Even more exciting is that it doesn't seem to be a completely cynical cash grab on the part of Activision, at least according to Metacritic. Now, I have asked the official Tony Hawk the Game account if they'll support Steam Deck at launch, but no word yet. I'll let you know if they do respond at some point. Now, I've added the game to my wish list and I'm really stoked to get my hands on it. I can't wait to see how this game performs on Steam Deck. All right, next up, Counter-Strike 2 is now available with a native Linux build. Now, I've tried the game on Steam Deck and, you know, it's what you expect. Though I personally am quite bad at the game, regardless of what control scheme I'm using. <laughs> now, if you want to play the game, it's actually available for free on Steam. And this new update comes with a bunch of interesting changes. Uh, the biggest thing here is volumetric smoke. Um, this could be a game changer for uh, players, as smoke from smoke grenades should appear exactly the same for every player on the map. There are other things here, like decoupling uh, input from frame rate. That's pretty awesome, too. Should be better for uh, competitive players. But I'd love to know what you think about any of these updates for Counter-Strike. But before we move on, let's talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes creating a beautiful, fresh, and modern website easy with Fluid Engine, their next generation web design system that makes unleashing your creativity easy. You can customize templates to your liking with their reimagined drag and drop technology on your desktop or even mobile. You can also use Squarespace to sell your custom merch, stuff like this, for example. It's a great way to engage with your audience, scale your brand, and create a passive income stream. All you need to do is design your products and Squarespace can handle the production, inventory, and shipping for you. Another thing I love about Squarespace is that with their extension system, you can connect your store to vetted third-party tools, which will extend the functionality of your site. The sky is the limit here. As a designer by trade, I needed a simple way to present my custom designs that reflect my brand. Using Squarespace's tools, I was able to get my new merch shop up and running with just a few clicks. It was so easy to use Squarespace, and I'm really glad that I did. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Right now, Squarespace is offering a free 14-day trial plus 10% off your first purchase. Head over to squarespace.com slash Gardner Bryant and use the offer code Gardner Bryant to take advantage of this deal. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And now, back to it. You can now pre-order the Legion Go if you're into that sort of thing. Now, you can pre-order over on Micro Center's website. And full disclosure, Micro Center is a sponsor of this channel. But this product listing shows October 31st as the official release date, which is pretty cool. So yeah, if you're looking for a Legion Go, then you can check that out. And the question that I have for you is if you get one, will you be installing a SteamOS like on it? Some Linux distribution that looks like or behaves like SteamOS, something like Chimera. Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Personally, I'm gonna be saving up for Deckard if that ever arrives. <laughs> and speaking of Deckard, there's a new Steam VR beta, and it's very interesting. Now, this is really cool as it kind of completes the Steam OS, Steam Deck, Steam ecosystem vision that Valve has. The changelog now says, Greetings! Today we are shipping Steam VR 2.0 in beta. We see this as the first major step towards our goal of bringing all of what's new on the Steam platform into VR. In order to use all the features in this beta, you must also opt into the Steam client beta. Users who opt into this beta will notice a new UI with lots of added features. Most of the current features of Steam and Steam Deck are now part of Steam VR. For example, you have the updated keyboard with support for new languages, emojis, and themes, integration of Steam Chat and Voice Chat, improved store that puts new and popular VR releases front and center. Now, this is just the beginning of Steam VR 2.0's journey, and we will have more to share in the coming weeks and months as we collect feedback and work on the features mentioned above. And looking at the screenshots, you can definitely see that the Steam Deck UI is front and center. Now, I have to say that, like, I'm so glad that the new big picture mode has been updated from the old version. This new UI is so much better, and it's great to see that this is the baseline for the uh, Steam experience going forward. Because one of my biggest issues with Steam VR in the past 
has been how different the UI was from the interface I knew on desktop or on Steam Deck. This update resolves all of those issues. Other than the new UI and some of the drivers though, there isn't a whole lot to see on the surface, at least yet. Hopefully someone like Sadly It's Bradley can do some data mining and that will yield some information about Deckard and whatever else Valve has going on over there. Now this is really exciting for VR players and I can't wait to see what comes of it. Before we move on, I wanna ask you, do you like this video? You believe in the work that I'm doing here? Why not like that smash button? It's the best way to show YouTube you wanna see more videos just like this. You can also subscribe if that's more in your wheelhouse. I wanna thank Webfreak for his continued support of this show. It's because of Webfreak and the other people over on Patreon who make what I do here a reality. So Proton8 has a new release candidate out on GitHub. This means that all of the changes that we've seen going into Proton Experimental will soon make it into version 8.0-4. These release candidates make a bunch of games playable, including EverQuest 2, Oddworld Strangers Wrath HD, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, and others. It also fixes a few Proton regressions in existing games, including Have a Nice Day, Resident Evil 4, and Echo. Finally, there are a bunch of fixes for specific games, launchers, and applications. The EA desktop gets its own obligatory fix this release. Overwatch 2 sees updates for game controller reading, Baldur's Gate 3 launcher sometimes displaying errors, and many other fixes. Also, the NV API was enabled for many games, including Baldur's Gate 3, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Spider-Man Miles Morales, and others. This is yet another exciting update for Proton, and it's great to see Valve contributing so heavily to the open source world. And speaking of, there was a fascinating read over on Pharonix about Valve this week and their contributions to the free and open source world. Titled Valve is a wonderful upstream contributor to Linux and the open source community, the article provides a quick overview of the ways in which Valve is helping to improve the free and open source desktop. From their work improving Steam Deck specific kernel modules to improving Mesa's OpenGL and Vulkan drivers, they have done a ton of really great work. But it's not just about the Steam Deck. They've also improved the Linux graphics stack as a whole. They also develop or help improve many of the tools that they depend on, including, including case insensitive file system support on Linux, various other kernel features, the GameScope compositor for Wayland, and their contributions to Flatpak. And that's just the work that Valve is doing in-house. They've also contracted independent developers, software houses, and free and open source organizations to improve open source tools. Valve has partnered with the likes of Collabora, Egalia, Code Weavers, KDE, and Gnome, among other organizations, as well as independent developers like Ethan Lee and many others. The fact that Valve contributes so heavily to the free and open source world, this is really cool. But, and you had to know this was coming, it's not really unique in the Linux world. While many of us Linux enthusiasts like to believe that it's this egalitarian utopia free from the corrupting morals of big business, where the infrastructure of free software is a communist common ground built exclusively by the hands of independent developers, that really doesn't match up with reality. <laughs> Like it or not, the free and open source desktops that we love, GNOME and KDE, the majority of the Linux kernel itself, heck, the majority of free software that we rely on on a daily basis, it wouldn't exist without big business benefactors who pay their software engineers to create, maintain, and contribute to these open source code projects. And I, for one, love that. Now, I'm not saying any of this to diminish Valve's contributions to open source software. Valve is probably the most visible public facing company that is so enthusiastic about Linux desktop. And that is really exciting. I'm just hoping that their support isn't an anomaly. And sometime soon, we will see other major game developers and publishers hop on board the Linux train. Okay, now we have to talk about these Steam input updates because this could be huge. First, I want to touch on the SteamOS color calibration thing. I keep turning on my deck and feeling like I have a new deck in my hands. Like, the color calibration is that incredible. It's truly hard to believe that this is the same handheld I have had since day zero. Then, we also need to talk about this incredible update. Gyro to mouse. Now, gyro to mouse is a new means of projecting the Steam Deck's gyro controls, as well as other gyro-equipped controllers, mapping those inputs to joystick movements that better emulate the precision of mouse movement. Now, it does sound a little complicated, uh, but essentially what they're doing here is they're allowing the gyro in a device to emulate joystick inputs that provide a mouse-like experience. While it's not the best option for gyro input, 
For games that don't support simultaneous mouse and gamepad input, it's the next best thing. But this new mode aims to make the precision and mouse emulation even better. And I can say that for the titles I've tried with it, at least it works pretty great. Now you can use the links below to read their uh, change log for these updates. Uh, it's a fascinating read, but it's probably a little too technical to go into in this video. I'm really excited about this change though. And I'd love to know what you think about this or any of the stories we've talked about today. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons, my YouTube members, and my ViewSync Premium subscribers who make what I do here a reality. It's because of you guys I'm able to keep these lights on here and we have a lot of lights, so thank you. I think that's gonna do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.